So I wanted to start it out today a little bit uh, about uh, what I have been working on over the weekend and a couple of surprises that happened today that I'd like to share with you. Uh, I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. So over the weekend, I've been working on my lab, and one of the things I was working on was to get Ceph installed. And today I came across something that was... <laughs> It just took me, it shocked me, to be honest. Uh, and, and that I was, I was uh, kind of absorbed in, in trying to get to the Ceph website. And there was a button on the front page. This was early this morning. And I'll show it to you. Uh, I, I <laughs> inadvertently captured it on video. So I, uh, I clicked on the button, clicked on the button to get more information and suddenly found myself on an IBM site talking about IBM's Ceph storage server. Well, as they say, well, <laughs> the plot thickens here. I used to work for IBM, and during the time that I worked there from 97 until 2007, I watched, I think, around 150 companies get what IBM calls blue-washed. And blue washing usually means oblivion for those companies. Uh, it's a it, this development that I just saw today raises significant concern about the future of Ceph, and by extension, the open source storage landscape in general. This is not a hit piece; rather. It's a methodical look at the signs that indicate where I think this might be going. And that's based on experience, not opinion. So the IBM playbook that I rem So <laughs> let me just back up a second before we get into all that. So when I hired into IBM in 97, I hired into global services. My group was, uh, was <laughs> way across Dallas in Rochester. Dallas, Texas, way across over in Rochester, which is a, a small town that had an IBM lab. It was, a, it was kind of a picturesque setting in the middle of, of Dallas. Campus, trees, all this stuff. Really pretty place to work. And we were assigned the task of coming up with the business plan for IBM's internet strategy later to be called e-business. So, yeah, so, I think in my case, it was more executing e-business than it was actually being the person that helped strategize it. But, yeah. Uh, but IBM's history of blue washing and, and what we call extraction follows a very disturbing, consistent pattern. Red Hat, once the powerhouse of the open source innovation, has been steadily, I don't know if they know this, but they're being steadily transformed into what many are calling Blue Hat. And that comes from the term blue washing. And I'll explain that. So Ceph is the latest, obviously the latest target in this evolution. IBM kind of tends to acquire technology. They pull out the pieces of the intellectual property that they want, and then they throw the husk away. <laughs> They'll usually incorporate it into some high-priced enterprise tool, probably in Tivoli or in Spectrum or one of their uh, other products, Cloud or whatever. That's where they'll end up. Is somewhere it'll be distributed somewhere along there. So, uh, and that allows the rest of the product line that's inside of those companies to just languish and disappear. They operate on something called a value proposition model. Uh, and that means that they will prioritize the dismantling of technologies in order of their revenue potential or according to their past revenue uh, performance. So, and more likely, it's going to be the revenue performance. So, and that's, and the, the process that they employ is called blue washing. This is the slow transformation of rebranding. They'll rebrand it to IBM Ceph Storage. 
They'll create a web page for it that's an on the IBM.com website. They will begin uh, recolorizing. Now, Seth is red, and they'll begin recolorizing that to blue and white, which that, that's a normal thing that they will do. Uh, they'll start shaping uh, the product to appeal more toward high-end enterprise customers. And they'll basically siphon the life out of it until there's nothing left. And I saw it firsthand uh, with a company that I was working with back in the beginning. Uh, I was working still outside of IBM. They were their own company. And they were growing rapidly in the, in the late 90s. Uh, I think IBM acquired them in 2003, and there was there was some <laughs> after after the acquisition there was signs that was going to get incorporated into the IBM software stack, and, and that's exactly what happened. They brought the leadership team over, the founders, and then within about a year they disappeared <laughs> they left in droves they just like we're out of here i think they got us they got whacked in the face with ibm's corporate culture and the sluggish movement of innovation that they uh, yeah that they enjoy that they didn't want any part of it and they that's why they left that would be my guess i don't know but uh yeah after that the signs all began to diminish <laughs> as, it, as it was yeah, siphoned into other products. The sign that I saw this morning is pretty clear evidence that Red Hat uh, as a company is a, it could could be about to undergo that. I don't know. I don't but this is part speculation and part what I think will happen based on experience. So the next step, as I said, will be branding and corporate repositioning. They'll, they'll take a product and they'll, which, you know, in the case of Ceph has always been for customers in either, uh, you know, the uh, data, uh, data centric, uh, data science, and they'll begin repositioning it for high end enterprise customers. They'll also be probably moving it into, uh, tiers where you know companies in the in the 50 billion to 100 billion in revenue range uh, live. So yeah, enterprise only focus will the next thing that will emerge as IBM will pivot those technologies towards those higher end. Usually they're contract driven enterprise solutions. They'll leave the open source community to fend for itself. So, and I suspect someone will eventually fork Seth off if they think it's worth saving and turn it hopefully into something else. But the slow dismantling of, of open governance is usually what happens. So if past acquisitions are any indication, IBM will likely restrict or slow community-driven innovation in favor of controlled subscription-based enterprise licensing. So, yeah. And, you know, you got, we all saw that a few years ago with CentOS. That was, uh, that was about the beginning of when the, the protection of Red Hat by IBM kind of went away, and now we start to see the blue washing taking place. So the order of revenue potential, IBM will take down Ceph and probably, I mean, they, they, I know they have gotten some, uh, some linkages between Linux One and the Red Hat Enterprise Linux project. Uh, Ansible probably, I would guess, would be another one uh, because that, that might prop up some other business inside of IBM that's losing money. So, and that's the other side of things that will happen. Hmm, which one would that be? Watson? Yeah, maybe Watson. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just just a guess. I think that pretty much hints at there's something afoot here. One of the th strategies that IBM, you probably have heard this, 
Uh, there was a saying back in the 60s when IBM was very dominant in the computer industry that nobody's gotten fired for recommending IBM. There was this, um, there was sort of this fear, uncertainty, and doubt strategy that IBM uh, uh, used, to, used to employ. One of the ways they did it was, uh, I remember when I was working for Burroughs, this would have been in the, the early 80s, we were starting to make inroads into a company that was one of IBM's big customers. Well, <laughs> they weren't going to have any of that. So, I mean, they, they came in and the first thing they, they told the, the uh, DP manager is, uh, hey, uh, we understand you're talking to Brand X over here. That's got to stop. And they went so far as the, they went over the guy's head, <laughs> got it removed from the decision process. And yeah, that's that's pretty typical. That's the fear, uncertainty, and doubt piece. Uh, yeah, they they will. They said things about us like you know, well, if you go with them, you're going to have all kinds of problems, and that's the fear part. And then we're not sure how long they're going to last in business. That's the uncertainty and doubt part, whether they would be us, us being around long enough to uh, see them through, a, 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 you know, their future. Yeah, so that was the old practice. The new practice is uh, why, why spend the money innovating when you can just buy it? What this possibly could mean for Red Hat is that with Seth maybe it looks like it's starting the blue wash process and that usually means it will be absorbed at some point and i th i think that we can safely assume that red hat will follow that same that same fate you'll notice products uh having the burner turned down on the amount of effort going into open source because that's that's free and we we're, we're not going to we're not going to support that. This could have a long-term impact where we could see a forking event, you know, of every product that Red Hat has acquired could end up becoming forked out onto the open source community so that uh, somehow we can try to maintain the open sourceness of those projects. And But Seth clearly is headed towards closed source enterprise territory I've seen that before, and there is no hope for them. They, they're they already underway in that process. So that was the reason why over the weekend I decided to not pursue Seth. It's not viable uh, in the long term for me. And, and so I'm just explaining to you why I made the decision not to go forward with Seth. Uh, I'm looking at another couple of technologies, one of which is MinIO. MinIO is a S3 bucket technology that uh, it doesn't depend on Amazon's S3. It allows me to create a API-compatible S3 bucket within my four walls here. Uh, if, if history has taught us anything is that when IBM takes over, the clock starts ticking. Uh, one of the things that I see coming is that uh, this is just the beginning. I think you can go down through the product portfolio, and I think there's going to be a, uh, a mass rescue attempt that's going to be needed to try to keep all of those within the open source community. I'm DJ Ware, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.